thing with the, 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 the folks who consider themselves transhumanists is, is this, this weird understanding of evolution. And to them, they really hate the fact that evolution is this weird, unguided, blind process that's kind of fumbling its way through history, doing the survival of the fittest thing, and hopefully ending up with us here. They, they take that almost offensively. They think evolution is bad. And what they want is they want designer evolution. They want to take the reins. They want to control the trajectory through which the future human and the future body will look and feel like. And then here's the funny thing. You, you ask a transhumanist, hey man, take a chill pill. Like, why do you think that you have the ability to take the reins of evolution? And they'll turn around and they'll go, well, evolution created intelligence so that I could take the reins of evolution. And you go, well, wait, wait a minute, your problem with evolution that was, was a blind, unguided process that kind of fumbled its way to intelligence and humanity, and now you're telling me there was a plan. Yeah, that something somewhere was guiding this thing to the point at which, waha. And now Kurzweil can go, all right, we'll take it from here, Darwin. We'll, uh, we'll see where we can, we can go from here. And, and what I find kind of odd about that whole thing is that uh, transhumanists will sit there and go, we are becoming gods. And I'm like, you're becoming a thing you don't even believe in. So how do you know that's going to actually work out? That issue that we're constantly struggling with when we ask this being human question, which is, are humans separate from nature or do we, do we come from nature? Because if we say we come from nature, we kind of then make the argument that the coming from nature piece is the justification for human intervention into the next stage of what we're going to become. Yeah? It's like uh, any human intervention into human biology must be natural because we're of nature. And we're making these decisions, so therefore it's come from nature. And you sit there and you go, okay fun, but is that something necessarily that, that, um, that we should be using as the guiding principle for how and why and when we're going to design this stuff? Because essentially what I'm trying to say is it used to be the fact that, that the body and environment was the thing that defined what humanity would become. That's the kind of thing that would control the destiny of humanity. And now these guys are going, hey, humanity? That thing, that should control the destiny of environment and body. And that's how we end up with ideas of the Anthropocene. You know, it's the human age. We are affecting the environment through our activity. And I don't know about you, but how's that working out? And then they want to go and do that to the body. You have to go. Mm, let's pump the let's pump the brakes here a little because the transhumanist community. What they really want to do when you when you get them in the bar afterwards, go find Adam Sandberg. He's a he's a fun drinking buddy. And you get them in the bar afterwards, and you scratch them a little bit, and you find out what they're really interested in. And it turns out they're interested in fixing things. And it's not fixing things as in repairing things. It's fixing things as in, hey, this like human thing that I've got right now here in the 21st century, I kind of like this. And I want to fix this, like fix it in space and time. And you see that expressed, I mean, usually it's straight white guys saying this, but they, 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 they want this kind of way in which they're uh, operating fixed in space and, and, and time. And you see that reflected in the sorts of technology that they're developing. So the longevity technology, the sorts of technology that are going to allow us to live, hopefully, ad infinitum, as is the goal. And that stuff's really about taking you at around 30 years old and just holding that space and time. You know, biologically, that's a great place to be. How do we load a bunch of drugs onto the human at that point in time, the point at which we are, um, uh, as they perceive it, uh, most uh, uh, biologically kind of set for the world, 
and continue that at, at infinitum. And then you've got the chronic, uh, cryonics guys. These are the guys who want to freeze everything. They literally want to go, hey, this thing, let's not wave goodbye. Let's go, yep, we want more of that, please. Let's stick us on ice. You know, they literally want to freeze a moment in time and extend that into the future as if this 21st century life is the thing that is worth preserving. And then you've got the mind uploading guys who are the best guys to talk to because I just think it's mad. And they want to upload their minds into computers. And they want to live in virtual environments that look, when you ask them, very similar to the world in which they're living now. But they have slightly more money, a faster car, and they're going to live on that server rack hedonistically until the end of time. And let's face it, if we do have an uh, energy crisis, those guys are the first guys we're switching off, the, the guys in, the, the, guys in the, um, the server rack. But you've got to give transhumanists a little bit of credit. Because the wonderful thing about transhumanists is at least they're techno-positive. You know, at least they believe there is a future. You know, and that's kind of a, that's kind of a fun place to be in. That's, that's kind of a, a fun place to play in because the opposite, well, the opposite is nihilism and the opposite is accelerationism. You know what, let's just accept our fate, roll over, hope the AI comes in, replaces our intelligence and turns the world into some form of weird plastic glob in which AI is now the dominant form of intelligence and I don't know about you but that doesn't sound great I don't know maybe it does maybe for some people they're like they're like hey yes and 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 part of the motivations for some of these trajectories are again this fear of what might come next this fear of what might replace us. And that fear is, is, is best encapsulated in the weird character that is Elon Musk. And Elon wants to create this thing called Neuralink. You know, what Elon's scared of is the fact that we're not, no longer going to be the dominant form of intelligence, and the dominant form of intelligence is going to be some form of AI. So how do we deal with this form of AI? Well, we enhance our human brains to deal with the speed and complexity of the digital environments in which AI will be a better and more efficient worker inside of the system that we generated and created in the first place. Now, the ironic thing is like a week ago, Elon was like, we're going to create Tesla AI. So I'm like, in terms of self-fulfilling prophecy, this guy's creating the problem and the solution, which, by the way, is great in terms of marketing. You know, you create the supply and the, uh, and, the, and the demand. And we've got to those tricky words, these words that always kind of reappear. When we have these sorts of conversations, especially at the Institute for Art and Ideas, which is, I guess, the environment we find ourselves in. You know, the environment we find ourselves in today is a very technologically mediated environment. It's a technologically mediated environment empowered by capitalism. We're looking at this thing as a threat to our jobs, and we're going, any form of advantage that I can get actually sounds like a good idea to me. But the problem is, or at least the, the thing we forget, is that we created that system in the first place. You know, so we created that system and then we're re-engineering ourselves to exist better in a system that we created. It's like sending a convict to prison and they come out and they're a more efficient convict. You know, it's the same, it's the same sort of thing. And, and what happens then is that these tech environments, they end up weakening human resilience. We start devaluing this whole being human thing. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.